Hello everyone, Connor from Connor on the Rails here, and today we are doing another series that won't die out like Steam Talk did. This one will be a bit more relevant. Today is the launch of the Engines on the MBTA series, and starting us off is the MBTA's outlier of the bunch, the EMD FB10. It's the early 1970s, and passenger trains are at an all-time low across the United States. The MBTA was formed a couple years prior and had been running with GP9s hauling old Bud RDC cars that dated back to the 1930s. The MBTA needed a new locomotive to power its trains, which were being used more frequently by passengers in the area. There was one small problem with this idea, though. All the major manu locomotive manufacturing companies in the United States at the time had stopped making passenger-specific locomotives. Since there were no locomotives on the market, they went to the next best thing, rebuilds. The Illinois Central and Gulf Railroad stepped up to, to the plate to fulfill this order. The Illinois Central and Gulf Railroad discontinued its passenger services in 1971. When they discontinued passenger service, they had a lot of equipment laying around. So the Illinois Central and Gulf Railroad decided to take their surplus EMD F3s and EMD F9s and rebuild them into the FP10. The rebuilds took place at the Illinois Central and Gulf Railroad Potica, Kentucky shops. There isn't much information on these locomotives, but here's what I found. The EMD stands for Electromotive Division, the company that designed the original locomotives. The F stands for a full with cowl body, and the P in its name is misleading, as it does not mean anything. The EMD FP10 uses a BB wheel arrangement using Blomberg B style trucks. The locomotives were numbered by the MBTA 1100 to 1153, and they ran on EMD 1657. 567B prime movers, outputting 1500 horsepower, which isn't too shabby for the trains they were running back then. The locomotive was 50 feet 8 inches long, a width of 10 feet 8 7 inches, and a height of 15 feet. The head end power was provided by a 480 volt electric generator. The classification lights on the front of the locomotives were replaced with red markers necessary for push pull commuter service. Although no samples were found, these locomotives were equipped with Leslie S3L horns. These locomotives were the MBTA's maroon and silver scheme, as well as their purple, yellow, and silver scheme that looks very similar to today's locomotives. These locomotives served the MBTA well, starting up their push-pull commuter services and giving their trains the boost they needed. They survived on the MBTA until the early 90s when it was time for them to go. Most were sold off to the Scrapper's Torch, but not all locomotives had this fate. Four locomotives were sold up, off to the New York City's Metropolitan Transportation Authority's Metro North Railroad. The locomotives were renumbered 410 to 413. One was leased to the Cape Cod Central Railroad, but then hit the Scrapper's Torch. So where can you find them now? Well, there aren't too many left, but here's what I've been able to gather. FP-10-1100, presumably still in operation at the San Luis and Rio Grande Railroad. Number 1101, at the Gold Coast Railroad Museum, non-operational, now numbered 4033. Number 1106 and 1112, at the Idaho Northern and Pacific Railroad, condition unknown. Number 1114, at the San Luis and Rio Grande Railroad, condition unknown. 1150 on the Nebraska Central Railroad, and its condition is also unknown. Number 1151 is owned by the Adirondack 
Railway Preservation Society, now numbered 1502. Its condition is also unknown. 1152 was owned by the Metro North Railroad and was numbered 413 and was sent to an unknown museum. For those of you who live in Massachusetts, you've probably been to Ed Edaville Family Theme Park, and they have a locomotive on display on the platform to ride Thomas the Tank in. That locomotive is MBTA EMD FP10 number 1153. Some things have been removed from it, like its wire connections. It was painted in a Santa Fe Super Chief war bonnet paint scheme, and then they repainted it all red, but that really threw me off. Wow. Thank you for tuning in to the first episode of the Engines on the MBTA. Stay tuned for the next episode. Share with your friends, like, subscribe, and comment. Until next time, always remember, enjoy trains! <laughs>